Okay. So, girls, let us begin the lesson. Infectious disease. Yeah, infectious disease. Okay. Flu. Now, one minute. Let me ask. Let me ask you. Don't say me the answer, Vatin. Uh, Lean, were you present today? Lean and Malak. Malak was there. I remember. Lean, will you tell me the yeah. infectious diseases which are infectious? Can I go bring the water? Yes. Yes, Lean. Which can come from another person? Kinds of diseases, infectious diseases, and non-infectious diseases. An infectious disease is a disease that is communicable. That means that a person can catch the disease from another. Please tell me, Malak. Can you tell me which are infectious diseases which can catch from another people? Um, skin cancer, and. Uh... Okay, like if I have skin cancer, that means my next person will also get skin cancer. Um, no. Infectious. Yeah, only people. Skin cancer is non-infectious. Infectious means you get from another person. Yeah. Uh, you can get the flu. Very good. Flu is the answer. That's right. Common cold. That's it. Common cold. Infectious diabetes, diseases spread. Diabetes and skin cancer. These are non-infectious diseases which do not spread, which we do not get from another person. From one person to another. Yeah. They can be caused by pathogens. The flu and the common cold are infectious diseases. Non-infectious diseases cannot be passed from one person to another. They may be genetic or caused by environmental factors, like too much exposure to the sun. Diabetes and skin cancer are non-infectious diseases. So diabetes and skin cancer are non-infectious. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. What causes infectious diseases? Okay, so as you know, pathogen is something that causes my body to get a disease. Okay, maybe for a while or for uh, for a longer time. Like example, bacteria. You have bacterial infections, we get viral infections, we get fungal infection, we also get parasitical infection. So one by one, let us see this. If you have ever had strep throat, food poisoning, or a sinus infection, you've experienced bacteria firsthand. Though many bacteria are beneficial to other living things, some bacteria cause disease and can infect a variety of your body's organs. You know, this is strep throat that is like your throat, you have pain and sometimes cramps. Vomiting and diarrhea in your uh, stomach is, you know, stomach cramps. So those all are bacterial infections. Viruses are responsible for the common cold, influenza, chickenpox, and human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV. Viruses are even smaller than bacteria, yet they can destroy the cells they invade. Viruses spread easily from one living thing to another. Have you ever eaten a mushroom? Then you've eaten a fungus. Most fungi are harmless and are even beneficial to the environment, as they help to break down dead plants and animals into materials that other organisms yes. can use. Yes. However, Miss, yes. all of the fungi are are health like are healthy or no? No, no. Most of them don't have any any use. Neither they are healthy nor they are harmful. Like some mushrooms mm -hmm. and some of them are helpful. They you know they they break down the microorganisms and they they are and some are pathogens. Girls, sometimes you have fungal infections near your fingers and your leg, and the doctors say you get a circle there, and doctors say you to apply some cream and then it goes away. So the mushroom is uh, made up of fungus. Mushroom. So mushroom. mushroom is, of course, something which is useful, not a fungi which is uh, causing a bacteria, causing harm to mm. A mushroom? Then you've eaten a fungus. Most fungi are harmless and are even beneficial to the environment, 
as they help to break down dead plants and animals into materials that other organisms can use. However, some fungi are pathogens. Infectious diseases caused by fungi include athlete's foot and ringworm. Sometimes we get a ringworm which is circular and you know we have, it's very itchy. So that time the doctor gives a medicine to us, antifungal. You know now, right? Whenever I say antifungal or anti something, that means it is opposite to treat it. Par a parasite is a living organism that gets its food from another living thing called the host. Some parasites are too tiny to see without a microscope, while others are visible to the naked eye. Examples of infectious diseases caused by parasites include malaria, giardiasis, and tapeworm infections. Next. Infectious diseases can spread in different ways. Click each picture to find out how infectious diseases may spread. So here they are given a very good examples of spread infections. It can be by some person. It can be some by animal like mosquitoes, mosquitoes or by some of the, uh, you know, what do you say, those uh, small flies or, or some other animals. And you know, the hair of the cat, there are animals that infect a lot. Now by water and food, by drinking unhealthy water or by eating food, which was, you know, which was uh, had, had a bacterial infection, or, you know, when we eat food from outside, sometimes they don't wash it properly or they, they, they uh, use, uh, you know, kept food from refrigerator. So that causes very much, you have pain in the stomach, uh, pain, the, the bacteria grows, and then you have muscle, uh, I mean, the stomach cramps, and finally a diarrhea and vomiting, you throw up or some by object, by touching them, you, as, as you know the virus, how it is going on nowadays. Many infectious diseases that affect the respiratory system move from person to person directly through the air. Cold and flu viruses are commonly transferred when infected people cough or sneeze. These diseases can also be passed by touching an infected person. Other diseases, such as HIV or hepatitis C, can only pass from one person to another through the exchange of bodily fluids. A few diseases pass from animals to people. Mosquitoes spread malaria. If an animal infected with rabies bites you, you can contract the rabies virus. Ticks spread by accident like example if the rat bite or there are few animals so there is a chance of getting a rabies called rabies you know it's a rabies virus so that time they go and they take an injection to get immune in the hospitals to get better wear and to take care in advance that nothing goes inside wrong what happens if you eat food or drink water contaminated with a pathogen you may get an infectious disease. Harmful bacteria cause most incidents of food poisoning. Cooking food thoroughly can kill pathogens and make food safer. Refrigerating food slows the growth of bacteria. Some infectious diseases can be spread by touching contaminated objects. The fungus that causes athlete's foot can live on the floors of damp showers or locker rooms. If you touch a contaminated doorknob or railing and then touch your nose or mouth, you could catch a cold. Like if a person suffering from cold, maybe he did not wash his hands and he just opened the doorknob. And then again, you touch that doorknob and by mistake, you put your hand near your nose or your mouth just near to it. And because as I told yesterday, these bacteria or these viruses, they travel very fast. 
especially the bacteria, they travel very fast. Miss? Many infectious yes. diseases. If somebody have a cold, if somebody had have a cold, and then uh, a mosquito come and bite him, then um, the mosquito come and put the blood um, of him to me, I'm yes. going to have a cold? It depends upon the person's cold. Maybe person's cold is not by virus. It is by bacteria. Maybe he has a cold, which maybe came from bacterial infection. Like maybe he drank something very cold or like that. So that even that bacteria, if it comes through the mosquito, it will not come and harm you. But if it is a viral infection, if he got it from somebody, so of course it is must that you will get it. Oh. Understand my point? Yeah, miss. Okay. So now we have your prevention and care. Previously, I told you about the, the what do you call as, uh, if I tell you that, what was that word which causes our body to, uh, which, which harm our body with a disease? It's called pathogen, right? So we spoke about four pathogens, bacteria, virus. We spoke about um, parasite. And one more thing, what was the other thing? Parasite, bacteria, virus. Enjoy. Fungus, yes, fungi. So these four things. And then we also speak, spoke about how, from what is the root, how they enter to the body through animal, and then we person to person, through things. And one more thing, what, we, what, what was the last thing? It was through animal, through person to person, uh, through touching the objects and... In by, by drinking water or by taking unhealthy... Many infectious diseases okay. can be prevented. Now, now we will check, now we will take the precautions, how to prevent them and how to prevent and care for them. Give a moment, girls. Okay. Okay, so now let us see the prevention and the care. The first picture is so common now as you all are doing that. We are very used to it. In fact, the whole world, we cannot even say this people is poor. These are, everyone has to follow the same, same hygiene. They need to wash their hands properly. Okay, they need to keep distance. Though, although any caste, any color, any religion, whether they're poor or rich, everyone have to take safe precautions. Good hygiene helps prevent the spread of infectious diseases. Washing your hands with soap and water kills pathogens. Hospitals reduce infections by keeping things clean or sterile and using antiseptic cleansers. I don't have to explain you antiseptic cleansers. I don't have to uh, explain you about sanitizers. I don't have to explain you how to keep things sterile. The word sterile is so common now. You know, like previously, uh, they used to do the sterilization by boiling it because boiling a uh, thing with water and salt keep it, uh, you know, uh, kills the bacteria present on it. Properly pickling, canning, freezing, or dehydrating foods and pasteurizing milk make these foods safer by reducing pathogens. Packing, Communities also milk. treat public water supplies to reduce pathogens, making the water safe to drink. Ouch! <laughs> Vac Ouch! Vaccination! Vaccines are often yeah. given in the form of a shot. Getting a shot may hurt for an instant, but the vaccine you receive protects you against viral infection. See, vaccine is not, uh, you know, injecting. Injecting is getting a shot. Vaccine is that substance that helps you to be, helps or keep us away from viral infection. Uh, from viruses or bad things. What? For, for keep us safe from viruses. Yes, it keeps, that's what, that's what the vaccine now for COVID-19, for uh, coronavirus, they are made. They will inject, 
they will inject the corona virus into our body but that corona virus will be weak it is not which will harm my body so much to that extent but what they put in my body is the virus itself the bio see we say that bacteria kills the bacteria virus kills the virus do you understand that yeah that virus what it goes inside that is called as antiviral no, so it doesn't make it worse it doesn't make it worse no it doesn't make it worse so see the people are saying these days that i get a vaccination and i don't feel better two days that is good because that means the body is respond to this virus already خلاص after that if he gets it again yeah miss my dad when t- when he took the vaccine he oh. felt like pain in his hand pain in his hand and yeah like- even, my, even my mom yes ouch okay. what should you do if you think you have an infectious disease diagnosis is the first step the word in cure diagnosis the- is very important for a physician for a doctor because the doctor the best doctor is the one who diagnoses a disease when you go and express yourself when you talk to him and give details a good doctor will listen to you and then he will gather all the information and then he will decide what he will he cannot say that you have that he will just you know judge it and later on with the test with a different test he will prove that you are having an infection you are having a viral infection you have a bacterial infection and that all will complete, come into complete blood count antibiotics treat bacterial infection so remember i remember when i used to make these in labs these bacteria that's antibiotics you see the inside granules inshallah if we have to yeah. see how to make them they are so amazing granules makings of granules in the lab these small balls we used to make from medicines and then we we yeah miss i have one we we used to keep them into a machine where it was encapsulated where it it you know it put into the capsule so these are antibiotics which are itself bacteria that kills another like these antibiotics are made from bacteria and that are used to kill other bacteria just oh. as antibiotics treat infections caused by but the same are with antiviral oh. drugs yes yes yagalia the thing that it's inside do we open it and eat it or do we just eat it all like this we we actually even if we open and eat it it is effective to my body but people will never eat because the taste is not pleasant the taste will make you you know throw up or the taste will make you feel nausea that's the reason it is enclosed in a capsule when you eat it the capsule goes inside and breaks you know immediately it opens up because of the heat and these small granules they they release slowly into my body they release slowly when needed and that is effective but if you open it okay. think it's not harmful it is of course useful shoo i'm so sorry girl okay, okay. <laughs> so this is how we all you know use our labs and we do things and we make and it's really interesting there was a year when we had cosmetology we used to make lipsticks nail polishes creams lotions soaps so all this will make you you know uh, you know it's interesting
the oven later on to dry the granules. Normally they don't fill up like this. Of course, we have special machines to fill up. They, they do it automatically. Everything is with machines. But they teach us how to exactly, you know, what is the steps to make them. They teach us like this. I think you felt that it's interesting. What can you see on the screen now here? Science Bacteria, foods. antivirals treat infections caused by viruses. Antiviral drug. Yeah, I want to see, I want to make you sleep the last one. What do Many infectious diseases can be just as antibiotics treat infections caused by bacteria, antivirals treat infections caused by viruses. Antiviral drugs work against specific viruses. No antiviral exists for the common cold, though. Cold medicines only treat symptoms. They don't fight the infection. However, if you have a serious case of the flu, you're in luck. There are several antiviral drugs available that can treat the flu. Okay, good. So let us continue tomorrow with the lesson. Any questions you have?